Now, despite 99.9% .9 of people that own a dive watch not diving with their dive watch, there's no question that they are probably the most popular wristwatch type out there on the market. I think a lot of this comes down to the fact that they are manufactured to be able to withstand tough conditions. So that utility that comes with that as an everyday wearer is really attractive. So today what we're gonna be doing is looking at about 15, 17 awesome dive watches from the affordable price range all the way up to around $3,000. So sub, I'd say Tudor Black Bay Omega Seamaster te uh, territory. And I think this is a interesting price range just because I think you can have a bit more fun. You can push the limit without having to worry so much about your dive watch. And ultimately there's I think some great value in this range to have a ton of fun with a variety of different dive watches available to you. So to begin here, uh, if you do want all things dive watches, I will have a link to a blog down below as well with over 40 dive watches mentioned. I'm sorry, I'm saying dive watches so much in this intro. I can't help it, I know what else to say. Uh, but a great blog down below if you do want more watches of this type. In addition to that, also just wanna plug my review channel, my second channel, where we cover different watches, about five to seven different videos, typically going out on that channel a week. So a lot of great content there that maybe some of you guys are missing as well. Just started that in the last six or seven months or so. So uh, a lot of people here probably aren't subscribed there. So definitely check it out. I'll have a link to both of those things down in the description below. Now to begin here, I think you have to look at Orient. And I think Orient has almost solidified themselves as some of the best dive watches that you can find for the money in this entry level range. And you could look at models like the Kamasu, the Kano, as well as the older, but still great the Mako 2 and Ray 2s. But when you're considering maybe the best option here from a true dive watch perspective, looking at the Neptune and Triton. The unfortunate reality is Orient is now discontinuing those models so that they're no longer available. So uh, I do wanna mention those at the beginning because I think there was a lot to love about those models. They were Japanese industrial standard rated dive watches, had hacking seconds, hand winding, in-house caliber, a lot to like, and also that power reserve indicator. But now transitioning to the newer models that were unveiled, they don't necessarily have a name, they just have these long lists of references, but basically combine the I would say Orient Kamasu style with the dial, with the case format of that of the Neptune and the Triton. You don't get the power reserve indicator as well as more of those diver spec capabilities, but you do get some nice things, sapphire crystal, in-house caliber, 200 meters of water resistance, and a slimmer case compared to the Neptune and Triton coming down to 12.8 millimeters with the thickness there. Now from Orient, I think you then naturally go to Seiko. And next we're gonna be looking at the King Turtle from Seiko. And the King Turtle, to me, did a lot of new things. I did a side-by-side -side comparison to the LX range, so that $600 dive watch from Seiko versus a $6,000 dive watch from Seiko. Great video, I'll link to it down below. Uh, but in that video, definitely could see how the King Turtle was a fantastic piece for the money. And it did come with a ceramic bezel, came with the traditional turtle style case, which wears much more compact. We're looking at 45 millimeters with the uh, diameter, but a very compact lug to lug of 47 millimeters. You're also getting that Cyclops with that waffle dial, which just looks spectacular when paired together. And it's just a winning watch. It does have a 4R36 caliber within, so, uh, that is going to be in comparison to some of the other models that you'll be seeing getting a 6R35 with that uh, long power reserve of 70 hours in comparison to this one at 42 hours. Still is a very reliable workhorse of a movement. And I think overall from a packaging standpoint is still very attractive from a dive watch in this five dollars $600 range. Now, continuing right along, I want to go into the Citizen Watch Group, first starting with Citizen. And Citizen's sometimes a mixed bag with how people perceive the brand. For one side, you have the people that just see them in department stores and you get watches that cater to uh, the people that maybe aren't as much enthusiasts. But then on the other side, you have these really killer dive watches that are really specced out and utilize that EcoDrive uh, technology inside to really be a fantastic set it, forget it, and reliable dive watch at that. And the model that we have here is the Citizen Promaster GMT Diver. So their Promaster line of dive watches really are fantastic. This particular version with the $600 price point is coming with a case size 43 millimeters, nice water resistance, and that EcoDrive B877 caliber within. You're also getting a titanium case, 
and the inclusion of a GMT, which is going to make this thing lightweight and have a ton of utility of uh, being able to track an additional time zone. And although being able to track an additional time zone underneath the water surface is maybe the top priority for somebody in that situation, it is nice to have if you are just looking for a great no-nonsense dive watch. And now moving right along to another Citizen watch group brand with Bulova. And Bulova, very similar to Citizen overall, kind of a two-sided brand. You have the department store, uh, pieces that are more mass appealing. And then you have also some really killer watches that appeal more towards the enthusiast perspective. And this model here with the Devil Diver is certainly towards the latter. These watches really just channeled that DNA from 1970s divers and Bulova from the originals that these are being emulated from, I think did a very nice job in creating this in a modern package. 44 millimeter case, but very compact lug to lug, very similar to a turtle at 46 millimeters with that lug to lug distance. So really fantastic there. 200 meters of water resistance. You're also getting a sapphire crystal. One thing that's probably gonna be of note though is that automatic Miyota 821D. And although it would be nice to get a 9,000 series caliber, if they did unveil a 9,000 series caliber in one of these watches, I think they would sell like hotcakes, uh, but I do think it's still a reliable movement and for the price range, isn't too much to ask for. Now, next up, we're gonna be looking at a micro brand and I do wanna kinda of keep the micro brand mentions to a minimum, uh, but I think this is certainly an exception because I think Baltic here that we're gonna be looking at is one of the more premium micro brands uh, from this uh, type of range that we're gonna be looking at. And I recently did a review looking at the Baltic Aquascaf GMT, a fantastic, I would say more entry level Swiss uh, caliber GMT that you could get uh, around 1200 bucks for it on that beads of rice bracelet, which I would certainly recommend. But the model that we're gonna be looking at here is the Aquascaf, the traditional Aquascaf that really made way for that GMT version. Attractive vintage looks, you're getting a 9,000 series caliber Miyota movement within, heavily domed sapphire crystal, very wearable case, and a style that I think is gonna sit very well with many people out there. Now, when considering Tissot, I think a lot of people think of their Heritage Collection. You also might be looking at their Gentleman Powermatic 80, uh, their Belayed series that are kind of getting into that cost certified movements. Uh, but another model that is maybe not as seen as much and a bit different for the brand is looking at their Sea Star Collection. Ceramic bezel, a little bit larger on the case size at 43 millimeters, getting that 80 hour power reserve, which is incredibly useful for a dive watch in this instance. So you can wear it every single day, put it on the side for the weekend and then pick it back up. It'll be still taken on Monday morning for work. And I think that offers a ton of value in this range. Uh, great looks. I think the blue dial options and some of the other more playful colors are a bit more youthful with their approach compared to some of the others. So a lot to choose from. They also have uh, other options that are a bit more expensive with the silicon hairspring inside and getting, kind of getting some up spec as well. Uh, but in this range, definitely a great entry level Swiss diver to go for. Now, while shooting this video, I am also working on another video, probably always have like three to four videos we're working on at any given moment in terms of this main channel that we work on. Uh, but the Doxa Sub 200, I have had that watch on my list to cover on the channel for quite some time. And I absolutely love those watches. Doxa is a brand with a ton of just heritage and tradition in dive watches. And the Sub 200 is kind of that perfect approach into taking a brand in Doxa that is not gonna be for everybody and making them a bit more appealing and I would say more mass market and at a price point that I think is going to be attractive as well. So the Sub 200 comes with a beads of rice bracelet, really reliable at a caliber within in a 42 millimeter case, but like many of the watches that we've mentioned so far, very compact when looking at the lug to lug distance with this one at 46 millimeters. The other great thing about Docs is they do the splash of color so well, maybe better than any other brand out there. You can go for the traditional professional with the orange, which is certainly the most popular, but they have a myriad of different options that you could go for for colors. Yellows, you have your aquamarines with that turquoise and also more traditional uh, dial colors that you could go for. Great watch from a fantastic brand with great history in the world of dive watches. Now, as somebody who has really um, gravitated towards the world of tool watches a bit more over the last couple of years, Marathon has been a brand that has really just intrigued me more and more. And I want just to be different too. I think one of the best options from a dive watch from a smaller wrist perspective is with the MSAR, the Arctic MSAR from Marathon. So the medium search and rescue from the brand. 
white dial, tritium tubes, 36 millimeter case. There's just a lot to like in that package. Also getting a sleet of caliber within 300 meters of water resistance and that very cool recessed style dial, which will make way for the hands as well as the rest of the dial to pass over those tritium tubes, basically done by intention. And Marathon has longstanding history of providing watches to military organizations, including the United States and Canada. Actually got their start back in 1941, making watches for the Allied forces. Uh, and looking at this one at 36 millimeter, this uh, case size, I think to be attractive to smaller wrists, which I think sometimes does get forgotten quite a bit when considering dive watches out there. Now in the past year, Seiko has been incredibly busy with releases of new dive watches, a lot of them featuring their new 6R35 caliber with that 70 hour power reserve. And one of the best examples of this was the Captain Willard edition. 42 millimeter case, but 46 give or take lug to lug distance. So very wearable like a common theme that we've been seeing throughout this video uh, when looking across. And you're getting a nice connection to Apocalypse Now, Captain Willard. A very cool 1960s, 70s design dive watch that I think will be very appealing to many people out there and has a lot of points of emphasis uh, of maybe pulling people in to want to look in the direction. A bit more expensive, but still a great offering. Now, speaking of, just like we mentioned with Doxa, I think the other brand that does the splash of color very well is Zodiac. And the model that we're looking at here isn't necessarily the one that maybe splashes with the most color, but still is a great dive watch for the price range, and that is the Zodiac Super Seawolf 53. 40 millimeter case, 49 millimeter lug to lug, so we're gonna wear pretty true there. Uh, you're getting an automatic STP 313 movement, 200 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystal, and a very stylistic design that has remained pretty true. It's more modern approach to the classic Seawolves, but does it in a very nice package. One of the problems with Zodiac is they do tend to be out of stock with many of their more exclusive limited edition pieces, which are gonna be the ones that definitely splash with a bit more color and a bit more daring with their design style. But if you want something more traditional and a bit more straightforward, uh, probably more versatile as well as a byproduct of all that, uh, this is certainly one to consider. Now last year, Formex unveiled a new watch with their Formex Reef. It's a dive watch for the brand and they really knocked it out of the park. Not only was it a new watch for the brand, but they also unveiled a new logo uh, with this watch, which it seems to me has been really well received. I think it looks much better, much more modern compared to their old logo that was for any video that you saw pre-June 2020, uh, definitely one of the talking points in the comment section when you would see uh, Formax as a talking point in the video. Uh, but this new watch is no joke whatsoever. 42 millimeter case, very compact lug to lug distance, definitely has some inspiration with its case design from something like a Nautilus, uh, but the bracelet is honestly the best I've maybe come across under $2,000. It is exceptional. Uh, how it just articulates with the links, very breathable, uh, well-constructed. Each of the sides of the links are going to be beveled with the polishing. It just looks way more premium than in a watch of this price category for sure. Great micro adjustment, also getting a cost certified movement within ceramic bezel and a variety of different color options to choose from. A big fan of this release and from a value for money perspective, if you can get past the brand equity standpoint, you're okay with going towards the micro brand route or say more of an independent style route. Uh, there's a lot when you just look at the thing top to bottom, why the Formex Reef was, uh, I think landed very well for a lot of people out there. Now, as of late, Oris has been very busy with really positioning their Caliber 400s and their Aquas, as well as the Carl Brashear Caliber 401 that was recently unveiled as well. But I think you have to just kind of almost look back at the basics. And I think with seeing those new models, you begin to appreciate the original Aquases and what they were providing from a value perspective. And the model we're looking at here is the 39 and a half millimeter Oris Aquas. No brainer, amazing watch for around 2000 bucks from Oris. Ceramic bezel, wearable case in this instance, but a variety to choose from, a variety of colors as well when you're looking at that. Reliable, serviceable movement inside from Salita and from a no-nonsense brand and one of the best brands in the price category with Oris. And I think the Aquas is certainly a winner when you're looking at dive watches. Now, recently I did a review looking at the Oris Diver 65 versus the Rado Captain Cook. And the Rado Captain Cook is a fantastic retro style dive watch that I think is in the instance of say a desk diver or a more casual style forward dive watch, 
some of the best that you're gonna find for the price range. And Rado uses a lot of their more avant-garde approach, infusing it with a vintage retro style very well with this piece. Variety of options to choose from, 37 millimeter option, you can go for stainless steel 42 millimeter option, as well as the bronze options that have been unveiled. The reddish burgundy really pops, ceramic glossy style, dial as well as bezel, and an 80 hour power reserve inside to give a lot of flexibility for the wearer. Now, speaking of retro style dive watches and doing it well, perhaps nobody does it better when talking about heritage timepieces than Longines. And a model that has been almost a fixture in the world of heritage Longines style watches for the past few years has been the Legend Diver from Longines. They recently unveiled a bronze option, which seems to be very popular nowadays. I'm seeing a ton of bronze dive watches unveiled as of late. Uh, but regardless of what option you go for, certainly a great one to choose. In the case of the Legend Diver, there's a 36 millimeter option, 42 millimeter option, uh, good flexibility there, 300 meters of water resistance, reliable uh, at a base caliber inside here. And unlike a lot of the divers that we've mentioned here, it does come in a compressor style, which is a bit different and is made to emulate those case designs made by the EPSA back in the day. The internal bezel on this one might not be the greatest for actual diving, but a very clean diver that can also be dressed up a bit more and in long jeans typical fashion, making a great heritage reissue. So, so far on this list, there really hasn't been much mention of German watches, which is kind of a surprise to me. I, that was maybe a oversight on my part, but a couple places that you can look, I think one that I've been mentioning to death and I actually have a review incoming, I'm very excited about it, with the Zen U50, a fantastic watch. Uh, from Zen and basically a size down version of the very popular and very durable U1 from the brand. But just as another option, looking at the Promare Go from Mula Glasuta. Now Mula as a brand is certainly one of the more overlooked watchmakers in Germany. Uh, a lot of that is a byproduct of the fact that they've only been making watches in the past 25 to 30 years, but have heritage going back many generations. I believe they're in the fifth generation, starting off in the 1800s, really specializing in marine chronometers or also making motorcycle speedometers for the likes of BMW. And a lot of that design influence has really been fused within the timepieces that they're making and very impressive and well-built ones at that. This Mula Promare Go in terms of the color option, I just absolutely love it. The mixing of different blues, the vivid blue dial, as well as just coming in a very well constructed case. 300 meters of water resistance, 42 millimeters with a 50 millimeter lug to lug distance. So this is gonna wear pretty true to that 42 millimeters. The lugs are a bit long on this one, but uh, if you can pull this one off, a fantastic option in the price range. So this movement is actually deconstructed and constructed again using Mula's proprietary components uh, with their woodpecker neck regulator design, which will help against shock as well as fine tuning regulation. So uh, Mula, serious watchmaker, very overlooked watchmaker from Germany, and I think a great way to close out our list here today. All right, guys, so that is the list here today. If you did enjoy this video, thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. It really was a lot of work to put together, so I would appreciate that. If you could pick any dive watch for sub $3,000, which one would you pick? Love to see comments down below. Definitely check out that blog as well, looking at 40 additional dive watches. So if you're very into dive watches, should be a helpful rundown as you continue your research. Also, while you're over there, teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of all the brands we carry, full factory warranty. So if something goes wrong for any of the products that you purchase from our store, you are fully covered. Don't have to pay the bill for it. In addition, we also offer price match. So if one of our products is available at another authorized dealer for a cheaper amount, you fill out the form on our product page and we'll give you a call. And finally, nine out of every $10 that we generate from our store goes right back into the content that we're creating here, helping to foster up a new generation of watch enthusiasts. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.